Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. Today we are chatting with Liz Medicine Crow, President and CEO of the First Alaskans Institute. Liz has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Liz, for joining us today. Goodness, Chief, thank you so much for having me here. So talk about the First Alaskans Institute, the scope of your activities, and the impact that you have on communities throughout Alaska. Well, First Alaskans Institute is a really unique organization, one that we are daily involved with thinking more deeply about how we are as an indigenous organization helping to shape the aspirations and the dreams of our Alaska Native community. Our vision for our organization, which I think is both profound and practical, while a lot of people have a hard time putting handles on what it means uh, for us as indigenous peoples in this place in Alaska, our homelands, uh, it just really makes sense. And that vision is progress for the next 10,000 years. So our work is focused in some really incredible areas, leadership development. Uh, we have an Alaska Native Policy Center, organizational advancement, and community engagement. What does that mean? It means that we're involved in helping um, to steward the dreams, the hardships and challenges of our community, and really trying to put legs on those by growing young people, um, adults and elders um, in ways that they want. We host an elders and youth conference every year, brings together about 1,200 uh, young people and elders from across the state. And it's, it's their dreams and aspirations that we're trying to catalyze and also try, trying to be in service to. That transmission of knowledge is a two-way street. Maybe, well, I should say more like a four-way street <laughs> because we're talking about the knowledge that our elders have for our young people and something that our elders tell us that they cherish about the conference is that they get to learn from our young people as well. So the young people are transmitting their knowledge back to our elders. Uh, we also have a great number of community leaders and adult members of the conference, chaperones, presenters, uh, who are also involved in that transmission of knowledge and sharing uh, the tools that they have and the knowledge that they have. And on top of that, we have the community. Uh, the community is involved in, in many different ways in the conference, from our arts and crafts vendors to, um, to the people who come forward, like our Alaska Native veterans and American Indian veterans, always play a part and always play a role. So it's, uh, it's, it's not just uh, bilateral, it's multilateral. You also operate a nonprofit, a 501c3 IRS tax code operating <laughs> entity with, so we have all this philosophy, but you, you go into the office tomorrow and you sit down and you have some objectives. So, so talk about how the, the practicalities, the daily work that you also do right. in order to <clears throat> preserve something that has nothing to do with an IRS code or forms or, or or any of that. Right. So there is a lot of we're the water and you could pour us into any container and we could find a way to not only shape the container or be shaped by it, but we still are unchanging in our nature. So we're the organization water. is a vehicle and not the engine in and of itself. Yes. That it, it, Very important. Yes. Incredibly important because that that really is about what can we do to indigenize our, our, our structure that pitcher that holds the water, mm -hmm. um, knowing that that vehicle is just one of many vehicles. We have tribal governments in Alaska. We have Alaska Native corporations, both regional and village. We have uh, regional nonprofits. We have other nonprofits that are advocacy-based organizations. Um, we have the Alaska Federation of Natives, an incredibly unique organization um, that's, that, that works as an advocacy organization. Um, <clears throat> we have all of these different vehicles, and, and yet driving those vehicles are other Alaska Native people who hold the same kinds of things to be true, no matter how diverse we are. That is actually one of our greatest strengths, that we are that diverse, and yet we also hold these shared values. So talk about some of those uh, programs that you have and how you divide up your areas of activity. Sure. 
So we have um, growing uh, Alaska Native leaders as so one of our capacity core. Building. Yep. Um, one of our core initiatives, and that's you know, that's about cultural connection, understanding who you are and your role in a collective community, which is a lot different in terms of philosophies from what is best for you. Right. And um, uh, the pr their professional development and career goals, and again coming back to the community. Um, being in service to advance all of us into the future. So really it's a leadership continuum from young people to adults to elders. Uh, we have a policy center where core to us is that Native minds shape the future. On the issues that impact our communities are Native people leading the decisions. So um, in multiple different forums and in multiple different ways we're using our ability to be a catalyzer, a convener, and a host on very difficult topics um, so that our Native people can come in and be the ones that shape that vision. So in terms of, of the relationship of, of the First Alaskans Institute to uh, people who are non-First Alaskans, mm -hmm. um, how does that function? What kind of a role do you play? Or are you mostly focused on on these, this set of issues within the community, and you leave those other issues where um, the interests of uh, First Alaskans intersect with, uh, with other interests to, to others? I love that question, because that's actually one of the core pieces of our work, is we really strive for collaboration and partnership with non-Native um, entities, organizations, and people. Um, core to our project is actually for the Alaska Native Dialogues on Racial Equity Project is a visionary council and a host group. Um, and it's made up of multiple different people from multiple um, backgrounds, ethnicities, heritages, um, and experiences. And they're volunteers in the community and they guide the way that this moves forward. Uh, we publish a magazine in our community engagement initiative. We publish a magazine called First Alaskans, and it's about sharing who Native people are today, um, about the things that are important to us, the challenges that we have, the big issues um, to the art, um, to the poetry, to the food, to the things that make us who we are and contribute to our unique perspective in the world and unique place in it. Um, and we use that as a way for non-Native people to start getting more access to us, um, the real us, um, and, and, a, and a way to educate people about the things that are happening in our communities. Liz Medicine Crow, thank you so much for sharing the work of the First Alaskans Institute. Thank you so much for helping me to understand a little bit more about First Alaskans and thank you so much for your insights. Goodness, Thank you so much for having me.